Hey, this is Steve Huff at stevehuffphoto.com and I'm here today with a brand new camera. Brand new camera. Ow, I just burned my hand because this camera is so hot I can barely touch it. Ah, the camera I'm talking about right here is the Fuji X-T1. No, not the X-E1, not the X-Pro1, not the X-M1, not the X-E2, but the X-T1. And this is a whole new direction for Fuji. And many of you know that I have been a little hard on Fuji over the years. And for good reason. I stand my ground. I still say the same thing today that I said then. The X100 series, the X100S, love them. Even the X100, though it was a little slow, the firmware updates sped it up nicely. And for what it is, it's a fantastic camera. The X100S, which is now fast, fantastic camera. X-Pro1 was slow as a dog. It was a beta product at release. I pretty much called it for what it was, saying the autofocus missed too much, it was way too slow. I got attacked by Fuji fans saying I was a Leica fanboy uh, until I told the truth about the Leica X Vario. I tell the truth about every camera I review, that's the bottom line. And not everybody's gonna like what I say about their particular camera brand, but in the past, Fuji has been releasing body after body after body. The X Pro 1 was slow as a dog from the start. It's much better now after the firmware updates, but I still would not buy an X-Pro1 because so many other cameras out there that I feel are better. Then they have the X-E1, the X-E2, the X-M1, all these bodies. The X-E2 is uh, getting closer. I reviewed that recently and I enjoyed my time with it. But now Fuji releases the X-T1 and it looks a little bit like the OMD E-M1 which is kind of funny. Um, the OMD AM1, of course, is Olympus's mega popular Micro Four Thirds Pro body. You have the huge EVF, you have the controls up top, you have the five axis image stabilization, you have the tilting LCD, you have blazing fast autofocus, blazing accuracy with the autofocus. This camera is just a powerhouse, it's a workhorse, and with all of the Micro Four Third lenses available, there's something from ultra wide to super telephoto. You have it right here. But now Fuji comes out with the X-T1 with the 16 megapixel APS-C sensor. And one thing that they did was not only did they shape the body much like the Olympus. In fact, I love my Olympus OMD EM1. But the X-T1, I prefer the body a little better because the grip doesn't stick out as much and it's a little thinner. It's kind of rangefinder meets little grippage here and a, you know the hump here, but the hump here is good because this viewfinder is finally, finally something that competes and goes head to head with the Olympus viewfinder. Um, the a viewfinder in this, as you can see, is humongous. It's an electronic viewfinder. It's beautiful, it's gorgeous. It um, basically has 2.3 million pixels, 100% coverage. Same as the Olympus, 2.3 million pixels, 100% coverage. The Olympus has 1.4 magnification. This has 70, 0.77 magnification, but I'm telling you, I'm looking through this viewfinder, it's like looking through a little slice of heaven and something that you would not expect from a Fuji because in the past, all the Fuji EVFs has been, have been mediocre. But Fuji decided, we're not taking any more of this butt kicking from Olympus. We're not taking any more of this nonsense from Sony. We are going to release the X-T1, and man, this is the first time that Fuji has released a uh, interchangeable lens camera that I really, really, really like. I've been shooting with this today, and i got to tell you, it's fast. The focus is, is really snappy. I am using the 14mm f2.8 lens today. That could be why it's snappy. Tomorrow, I'm going to shoot it with the 35.14, but man, this is such an improvement over the X-Pro1, and if you can't tell by my voice, I'm pretty excited. And when I get excited about a camera, it shows in my videos. If I'm talking like this, you know, then that means I'm not excited. But Fuji, I love Fuji. Everybody thinks I hate Fuji. I love Fuji. It's got to the point where the last couple of cameras, I kind of pointed out all the negatives because I felt that if someone didn't point it out, see the fanboys of Fuji, they don't point it out. They say, this is the perfect camera. This is the first camera that has a soul. Nonsense. Leica, to me, Leica M is the first camera that had a soul, but Leica's priced astronomically. You can't, most people don't want to touch a $7,000 body. So Fujifilm comes along now with the X-T1. Finally, I say finally Fuji, 
Thank you. Uh, Fuji did not send this for me to review. They actually stopped being in contact with me after uh, I gave sort of a negative remarks about the XE1, maybe it was, saying it was too slow and blah, blah, blah. So they don't even contact me anymore, which I feel is a shame because I feel a company, if you can't write an honest review, um, what can you do? I mean, I just do what I do and I'm going to write and tell exactly the truth. But I'm here to say, you heard it first right here, Steve Huff, Steve Huff Photo, Fuji X-T1 is the very first interchangeable lens Fuji body that I am falling in love with. It's fast, it's responsive, there's no hang-ups, focus is accurate, um, and the one thing that's really cool, it's kind of like a mini Nikon DF. You have your ISO dial right here on top, just like the Nikon DF that I really liked. Um, you push the button in, you turn it like so. Um, so you have easily accessible ISO, right now it's on auto. You have a dial here, that you can change all your shooting modes, bracketing, uh, continuous high, continuous low, single shot, and so forth. Then you have over here another dial in the front. So if you wanna change your metering mode, and I love this, you can go spot metering, matrix, and center weighted. All right there without having to go into the menu. Then you have up here, right now it's in aperture priority mode, or you can choose your shutter speed. And one thing cool with the Fuji lenses is the aperture dial is on the lens. Then of course you have your exposure compensation dial, which the Leica M badly, terribly needs something like this, and they don't have it. So you have everything accessible right on top of the camera uh, for you to use. I mean, this is a photographer's camera. This is the first Fuji. Um, this beats out any Sony body, uh, the NEX, the Alphas, the A7s because the A7s, they don't have this kind of control. They don't have this photographer's style of a body. I love all the controls here. So you have your power button here, you have your thumb dial here, you have a thumb dial here, so everything is right where you want it. So I don't have a memory card in here right now, but I'm telling you, this is the most responsive Fuji that I have ever shot with. And that, my friends, was the main problem with every other X body, uh, all the way up to the XE2 still. So if I were in the market for a Fuji interchangeable lens body, without hesitation, without any hesitation, I'd say buy the X-T1. As a matter of fact, I was just telling someone the other day, because I sold a Fuji lens that I had laying around here, and I said, uh, I'll, I sold it for a great price. And he said, why are you selling it? Are you getting a different lens? I said no, because I don't plan on getting any Fuji bodies, because frankly, I've been unimpressed. And uh, that was my, you know, that was my firm stance. I don't picture myself getting a Fuji body. And now after trying this, man, I am so tempted, because I can see myself, if I have the Fuji film, now you guys who watch me, you know how much I love my OMD EM1. I adore it. I've taken so many great photos with this in my personal life and just an everyday use that I love it. But if I have both of these, the way the response is on this now, I think I would be taking this one unless I find out something uh, here in the next few days that I don't like. Again, I've only been shooting it for about uh, a day. Um, you also have here your focus dial, single, continuous, and manual. Um, it even has a tiltable LCD just like the Olympus. So Fuji means business with the X-T1. With a kit zoom lens, the 18-55, to the Fuji's gonna run about $16.99. So it's uh, actually priced pretty decently. It's priced around the same price as the Sony A7 body only, which is gonna give you full frame, but the Sony's gonna be slower to focus, not have these kind of controls, and you're not gonna have as many lenses available right off the bat. So yay to Fuji, I give it a thumbs up so far. This is a first look at the Fuji X-T1. This is not a review. My full written review will be up within about two weeks, but I am seriously considering, uh, b &H Photo sent me this to check it out and review, and I'm seriously considering giving them a call in the next few days and handing over my uh, credit card number and saying, I think I'm gonna keep it. Um, and no, I don't get it for free. I have to pay for it. The Fuji X-T1 right here, made in Japan. Um, all your menus are similar to the previous menus. You have all kinds of options. Um, 
you know, in, in the menus to choose from. But once you set up the menus, as with any camera, once you set up the menus, you really don't have to mess with it. You have all the dials here to, uh, to take your photos, and that's all you'll have to mess with. So I have a Leica M that I adore and love. I have an Olympus EM1 that I adore and love. I have a Sony camera. Um, you know, so I gotta start cutting down my, um, I gotta start cutting down my camera collection because I am no long, I no longer shoot professionally. That's my choice. I work full time on the website, but I do love to take photos. It's my passion. And this, my friends, the Fujifilm X-T1, it's some, it's one of those cameras that can bring out the passion. So I'm going to end it right now. Oh, I'll give you a quick look here. I also have a Pentax K3 on hand that I'm going to be shooting. Now in comparison, you can see, let's see if I could fit them in the frame. By comparison, the uh, the Pentax is much fatter than the Fuji. Let's throw in the Olympus into the mix. So you have Olympus EM1, Fuji X-T1, and the Pentax K3, which is just fat, and it's very small for a DSLR. Um, if I was going to buy a DSLR today, and I wanted to go DSLR, it'd be the Pentax K3. I love the Pentax DSLR lines. This is a 51.4 on it right now. It's fast, very great white balance, auto white balance, um, very pleasant picture quality. It's just, do you want this fat uh, style after you've been shooting great cameras? Like so, like there, it's like double the thickness. So anyway, I'll be going over the Pentax later. For now, the first look result of the Fujifilm X-T1 is very positive. Um, it's a great, great improvement of all the Fuji bodies. Uh, again, I've only shot with it for a day. So if there's anything I find wrong with it, it will be in my full review. But so far, so good. I want to say this is the first Fuji X body that I'm falling in love with. And the very first, uh, I liked the others, um, but I didn't love the others. So will it be something that replaces my beloved EM-1? Probably not. I'd probably keep this no matter what. But man, I'm seriously tempted. So keep an eye out to stephephoto.com for my full review of the X-T1 with tons of photos, tons of text, all the tests and goodies. I'll be comparing it against this guy and my Leica M. Maybe I'll throw in the Pentax in the mix, and maybe I'll throw in the Sony. But the Fujifilm X-T1, it's available now at Amazon or B&H Photo. The links are in the description. Go get it. If you're into a Fuji body, this is the one to get. See you later. Yeah.